Good evening, Eve. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good evening, my friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Nina Niskanen, and this is the place where I document my journey to make all of my own clothes. This week, uh, I am making the Spinifex pajamas from Muna and Broad, and yeah. I'm making them in, I think, the top in the size G and the bottoms in size H, I think. I am pretty sure this is correct. Anyway, uh, the fabric that I'm using is a flannel that I dyed myself, this petroleum blue. It is a very nice color. I am pretty pleased. Um, yeah, so first thing we do is uh, I finish the, um, I think the long edges of of these fa uh, facings. Anyway, uh, there, there, there are slanted pockets on the trousers and uh, these are meant to reinforce the opening openings on those. So uh, I need to finish this edge on my serger and I'm going to take the pockets themselves with me because that's not the next step but the step after that so I'm just gonna get them ready at this point. So I will see you on the other side. Alright, so the next step in the process is to attach the pockets in place, the front pockets. I've pinned out roughly where the uh, pocket lays. Uh, so, so it's top stitched in place and then once that's done I also need to stay stitch uh, the bottom here and also the top in three places for both of these pockets. But that is going to have to wait until tomorrow because it is getting late and I am very tired. I will see you on the other side. The pockets are on and stay stitched uh, at the instructed places, three places all told. I'm guessing that's where the, uh, um, what is the word, the elastic goes. Then also at the sides and then top stitch, but you can't really see that. So there is that. Next thing on the menu is going to be 
sewing the crotch seams and adding the crotch gusset. Um, and after that I have no idea what happens next but that's fine because I'm done for the night after that anyway. So yes, I am sewing the crotch seams on both the front and the back, fronts together, backs together, and then adding the gusset. I will see you on the other side. So, here's an interesting thing. Uh, shows how important it is to start from the middle and work outwards. I have about a centimeter difference in length between the fronts and the backs. I don't know why. Uh, don't know why. Um, but uh, I have the same difference on both sides and if I had uh, started from the edges I would have had a very bad time. Always start from the middle. Friends, I completely forgot about the um, the side seams. What? So first the side seams, then the um, el the elastic. Yes, this sounds like a very good plan. We'll see if it actually works. <laughs> Well, that was certainly a workout and a half, but the waistband is easily one of the most professional looking things that I've ever made. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased about it. Um, there are a couple places where the lowest, lowest line of stitches didn't quite meet the elastic, but that's fine because A, Mostly it does, and B, I don't actually really care about that. Um, the the uh, the waist uh, elastic is stitched on by three full lengths of stitching, and also a fourth line of stitching that is mostly on there. There's like a I don't know, maybe in total less than 10 centimeters that don't don't meet up, so it's good enough. So the next thing on the list is going to be adding the cuffs on the legs. That is that is the next thing on the list. Yes. And I'm gonna do that uh, right after I try these on to make sure that I don't need to uh, I don't need to do any any changes in order to make them fit because at this point 
I can still back out of this if if this turns out into a into a horrific mess. Yes, that sounds like a plan. I will see you on the other side of the cuffs. Okay, so before I begin construction, I'm just going to show you this. Uh, I made a teeny tiny mistake in that I cut the front part. Yes, the front um, uh, pant cuffs interfacing twice. So the back part is the longer of the two and as you can see I did not have enough nor did I have enough of the same um, interfacing to uh, cut out cut it out new uh, cut cut out new pieces so what I'm doing it what I did instead is that I tried to center the facing piece as much as possible on so that only the seam allowances would be left uninterfaced and I'm just gonna use it as is it's it may or may not cause problems I think it probably won't mostly because um, it's centered so that only the seam allowances won't have the interfacing and all of the rest of it does so I'm I'm hoping that will be enough uh, I also need to trim as you can see uh, the the interfacing is coming out on the right side so I need to be careful when I'm when I'm uh, when I'm uh, putting it on, uh, putting the piping on to uh, follow the line of the uh, the piece and not the interfacing, but that should not be a problem. In any case, I'm going to start putting this together first. So first, I'm going to sew sew both the um, front uh, front and back pieces together so that uh, only on the notched side so that I can then start an attaching the piping and once the piping is on I'm going to stop and see see what comes next so I will see you on the other side Okay, so the next task on the list after attaching the piping was to reduce the bulk at the seams for the piping by removing some of the cording. But the thing is, uh, for mine, the, the trouble is that this... Um, the the very outside of the of the thing is is it comes apart very easily it's i'm having a hard time describing it but it it will come apart if i try to try to do that so i'm not going going to do that so the next thing after that is to um, sew the the other end of the cuff together and then to attach it to the pants that are hanging right there on the back of my uh, back of my door. My goodness, I am tired. Uh, I am going to put together the final seam of the cuffs and then after that's done I will attach these cuffs to the pants and after 
that I th no after that I still need to pin stitch around the cuff when it's on the pant on the right uh, on the like turned around on the <sighs> turn to be on the correct side of the pant yes I th think um, I I I hope I I managed to uh, do this in the correct way. Anyway, I will see you on the other side. Okay, so remember when I mentioned uh, the little overhang of the fronts and backs? I am pretty sure it led to the uh, the cuffs of the cuffs of the leg and the actual leg openings not quite matching so what I have is I've got just a little bit of difference you can see there's sort of a little bit of bubbling up here and here and anyway so my plan is to a disengage my um, dual feed uh, I have dual feed which is sort of the equivalent uh, for at least some purposes of the walking foot on on other other um, sewing machines so I have disengaged the dual feed and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew with the um, Come on now, the uh, the interfacing on top, and I'm going to start at the side seam, which the pattern specifically mentions that you should match. So I'm going to start at the side seam, and I'm going to sort of pull a little on the on the on the top. That way the feed dogs should sort of ease in that little bit of difference that I have on the other stuff. Did I match the wrong ones? No, 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 no. Yes, yes I did. No, I didn't. <laughs> So what the the first seam that you sewed where the the piping is continuous the pattern tells you to match with the side seam because that is going to be m more seen. So I was for a moment there I was afraid that I had matched it quite the opposite. So anyway I'm going to go slow. I'm going to let the feed dogs do most of the gathering on here and I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to do the same thing when I get to top stitching the um, piping but that is a matter for that time. Yes. So that's what I'm going to do and I will see you on the other side.
and thus the pants are done. The um, the cuffs are both neath, both inside and out. This part bothers me a little, but not enough to change it. But yes, uh, in general, I've also tried them on and they fit. Well, I did that yesterday, but anyway. Um, so yes, now let's move on to the shirt slash jacket, whatever. Um, and I believe the first step on that part of the project is to construct the pocket here at the chest. So I will see you on the other side of that. All right, so while I have the zipper foot on, I am going to add the rest of the piping that the uh, front, uh, front, the, the top is going to need. Um, the next up is the collar and um, I think the fronts would also like to have some some piping in there but uh, that cannot be attached until the collar is in place so I'm just gonna do that later and the um, I think the other thing is to put some piping on the cuffs so, um, I made the mistake when I ordered that I didn't order enough of, um, so I was trying to order the white, uh, 10 meters of the white because I'm planning to make later this year, I'm planning to make, uh, the Carolyn pajamas from, um, Closet Core. And, uh, I figured I might as well order... 10 meters of the piping instead of the five that I need for this. So, uh, foolishly, what I did, uh, because there wasn't 10 meters of the white one, uh, I ordered seven meters, which was what they had of the white one, and three meters of the black one. So there's not going to be enough of the black one for this one. So, uh, what I'm planning to do is, I think, I think I'm planning to add what I have of this into the collar and the front. I don't want to add on the inside, inside lapel of the front. I don't want to add this all the way. I, I do want to add it at the, at the notch at the collar, but I don't want to add it all the way because it's going to be I mean, it's it's not scratchy per se. It's just it's not going to feel nice against the skin. Is the thing. So I'm adding this to the collar and the fronts, and then I'm adding the white one to the cuffs. So that way there's at least some hope that it'll be. It'll be good. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. I will see you on the other side of attaching all of this piping. To everything except the front. Friends, let this be a lesson to you. Don't sew while you're tired. I just started sewing the piping on the wrong side of the garment or the piece or whatever <sighs> so now I am taking it apart and 
then hopefully putting it together on the correct side this time because sometimes life be like that I'll see you on the other side I have added the piping to the cuffs, the collar, the pocket, and the next thing it, to do is to put the pocket in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start with uh, sewing a line around the pocket at one centimeter. That's to help with the uh, with the pressing, so that the the raw edges can go hide. And then after that, I'm gonna attach this to the left side front. And after that, I'm sure there there will be something else, and I will do that. But I will see you on the other side when the pocket is in place. So the pocket is now on the left front. Where is the pocket? <laughs> the pocket is now on the left front. It is there. It is lovely and that means that it's time to move on to putting the actual thing together. So the first thing I am going to do is I am going to sew all of the shoulder seams. So there are four. Uh, four. <laughs> uh, fronts and backs and facing fronts and backs. So. That is what I am going to do now. And I will see you on the other side of all of those shoulder seams. The shoulders are sewn with the um, with the seam allowances finished and the seams pressed toward the back. The next step on our way towards having a finished pajama shirt is uh, putting on the collar. So I have pinned the collar in place and now the next step is to put put on the collar and then after that is done then put on the sleeves and then sew the side seams. Um, there will be more sewing on the collar uh, when the um, in the fullness of time let's say there will be more sewing on the collar in the fullness of time. So at this point it's just uh, a centimeter so I think my guess is that the um, 
seam allowance on the collar will be a lot bigger once the other stuff is in place but we will see I have not checked at all but collar sleeves side seams I will see you on the other side All right, so um, the time has come to put on some more piping. I am going to put on some piping to the front, the right front. I'm going to put uh, piping all, all along the all along the uh, um, the edge. And on the left front, I'm only going to put piping on as much as I can from the top and all the way down to where I ran out because I am going to run out of the of the piping with the black pack backing. So the plan as of right now is to yeah, put the piping on where I can and then after that it, it is time to sew on the facing which I appear to have lost. That's right because it's on the hanger. <laughs> I may be slightly tired, just ever so slightly. Anyway, um, Yes, so piping, and then I need to put on the facing, and then after that's done, I need to finish the hem, the hem of the, the garment. And after that's done, um, we will see. There's some sort of top stitching going to need to happen. I'm just not entirely sure um, how it is going to happen at this point. So piping, facing and finishing the hen and I will see you on the other side. Okay, so this this piping is a bit of a pain in the patella, but it is on. 
the uh yeah the the result isn't pretty but it's on <laughs> Uh, I am pretty sure that at least this this point here is probably uh, not too good, but we will see. And uh, on both sides, this one this one is definitely not okay. But we have a chance to fix it in that I am going to put on the facing next and then once that's on then everything will be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. No? Anyway, uh, the next step is to put on the facing and I think that will let me fix at least some of this piping the i i cannot recommend having a piping with this small uh a foot a tail the the black part here it is i think it's about a centimeter here and um it's just it's not good it's not great anyway the piping is on and uh, the next step is to put on the... Oh! I almost had enough uh, to get this down both sides. This is where it's supposed to end and that's how much is missing. And that's the inside, the, the lapel that's going on the inside, so I don't mind that. It's not all the way there. Uh, yeah, in any case, I will see you on the other side of the facing. So, the facing is on, uh, it ha the facing has been, I, I have turned the facing, is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, I have turned the facing, should probably make this part a little neater. Uh, on both sides. I think what I may actually do is I might just unpick that little that little bit right there so that I can sort of get that end inside the inside the facing because that way it will be a lot nicer to wear. Also, it will just look nicer. So there's that. So uh, I'm going to do that. And after I've done the unpicking, I'm just going to understitch the collar uh, right here. And also the lapels or the fronts. Uh, 10, 10 centimeters down from from the top and all the way down 
and then after that um, I think after that I'm going to put on the cuffs on the sleeves because um, I really don't want to be <laughs> changing out the foot all the time and I need to understitch those before I change back to the or put them on and understitch them um, before I okay so <laughs> I need to pin stitch around this edge using a zipper foot I also need to pin stitch around that edge uh, using a zipper foot uh, once they're on but only after I've put them on so my plan is to do everything that I need except to top stitch the front or the facing on um, and after that's done um, yes anyway you'll you'll see you'll see um, so unpick understitch sleeves and then I will see you on the other side. All right, one last thing. Well, really, technically, two last things. I need to add buttons. Buttons. And buttonholes. And then it's done. Uh, I... I don't think that I'm going to have the energy to do that tonight. I'm just... It's getting late and I'm getting tired. So that will have to wait until tomorrow. But buttons, buttonholes, and then I am finally done with the, these pajamas. And that is awesome. I will see you... <clears throat> I will see you on the other side.
finished. It is very good. A few notes though. Um, so the pants, well, A, <laughs> this whole ensemble is a bit big for me. Like, not uncomfortably so, especially since we're talking about a, a, a pajama set. But uh, the uh, pants, they are loose, like everywhere. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what to think about it, but here we are. Um, the shirt, likewise, is... It is quite loose, as you can see. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is a thing. Uh, I would prefer it to be a little more close fitting. Like it's obvious it's obviously meant to be a very boxy type of thing. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about is maybe I need to start adding length to to the tops of Muna and Broad patterns because this is this is, like, the front is ending significantly higher up than the back. As you can see, it looks almost as if a high-low, high-low type of thing. And I'm not entirely sure that I'm a fan. But, in general, the pajamas look great. I can't wait for the actual cold times next winter uh, to, to wear this because it is obviously it is very warm because well it's flannel pajamas y'all and yeah it's it's going to be very warm to sleep in and I I'm I'm okay with that um, <clears throat> In general, this this is a very successful project. Um, the the next time, I actually a note. I really love the length of these sleeves because on the uh, so I made the size G on the top and the size H on the bottom, which is what the measurement suggests. And uh, I think I also made size H for the for the the jeans, noise jeans, um, and that seems to be in general sort of. I think my proportions are very different from from what Muna and Broad is drafting for. And that's where the problems are coming in, for me at least. Others may see this as a non-problem. But yeah, for, for me, I think my proportions are off in terms of what Muna and Broad is drafting for. I think... It might be a good idea to make myself a, um, a, a trouser block, like a, a block pattern for trousers, and compare that to the Muna and Broad block to figure out where, where I differ. But one thing that is definitely different is my front length as compared to what the Muna and Broad front length, length is. And that is also visible in the... in the... Um, what is it called? The Banksia tanks that I have. And... yeah. I think that might be a place to um, have a look at before I make my next Muna and Broad pattern because I'm gonna keep making them. It's just 
<laughs> that's just gonna happen. Um, I think I'm going to look into making the Glebe, Glebe pants next and I think that's going to be a good time. Um, unless I have something else on, on, on the schedule that I can't remember now. But in, in any case, in general, these are very good pajamas and I'm, I'm very much going to look... I'm very much looking forward to, to actually wearing these uh, on, on, a, on a nightly basis. Um, yeah, it's a very successful pajama set. Uh, I think I've got the um, Closet Core Caroline pajama set um, scheduled somewhere over the summer that I'm going to make out of a lot lighter fabric, but I, I, I have Y'all have no idea how, how long I've wanted a pair of flannel pajamas and now I have flannel pajamas and they're great. I just wish I had made them earlier so that I, I would have had some winter left. Because right now we're into um, what we in Finland call Takatalvi, which is also known as uh, the return of the sun of the winter, of the re revenge of the bride, of the sun, of the winter. Something like that. In any case, if you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, do all of the YouTube things, and I will see you next Thursday.